Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. This week, we are coming to you from NASA. This is one in the ongoing podcast that we're going to be doing from NASA, from the Ideas Conference that is put on by Autodesk down here in Silicon Valley. In this podcast, we interview Ramez Nam. Ramez is really quite an amazing guy. He comes out of high tech. Um, he did quite a lot of work at Microsoft, but he's really taken off from there. He's a, he's a speaker, he's a writer, and he's a, he's a futurist. And how I got to know Ramez is actually through his book, this really amazing book that he wrote um, that just came out called Nexus. Um, and it's gotten really great reviews. One of my favorite reviews comes from Wired, and this is basically what they say, Wired Magazine. They say that uh, Ramez's book, Nexus, is good. Scary good. And I just love that. Uh, and I sat down with Ramez. He was here at the Ideas Conference. He was a, a participant in the exploration of science fiction prototyping and how we can use science fiction prototyping in the things that we design and how we imagine the future. And Ramez was actually in my group for the theatrical science fiction prototype that was put on by the folks at Biologic. Uh, Biologic is a fictional company, a fictional synthetic biology company, and the people from the Mission Company, who is an experimental theater and kind of almost a futurist company that, that uses theater and uses media design as a way to pull people in and actually have them live inside of science fiction prototypes. What Jonathan Knowles and Tom Wujek uh, from Autodesk, what they did is they worked with the people uh, from Biologic, this, this company, this fictional company, to give us a four-hour science fiction prototype where we sat down and the group of people that had assembled for the Ideas Conference actually had to live in this fiction. Um, and it was really amazing. I, I kind of go through the details in the um, in the column in uh, this month's IEEE computer science fiction prototyping column. But it was one of these amazing um, events where they broke us off into different groups. And Ramez was in my group along with uh, Douglas Copeland and uh, Jeff Kowalski, the CTO of Autodesk. And we had to really think about the effect of effective computing. So if you have AIs that have personality and you have artificial intelligence that can make decisions, what happens when those artificial intelligences stop making sense? When they start possibly lying to you and they stop doing what you ask them to do? And it was this really tricky logic puzzle that we had to work out and it really brought the the notion of science fiction prototyping into that room because we were having to talk to the AIs, literally talking to the screen and having the artificial intelligence talk back to us as we were trying to solve this problem, this problem that uh, this this asteroid was being brought back to Earth and there were some very nasty things in this asteroid. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a following podcast, but it was an experience that Ramez and I shared together, and then right after that, he and I sat down in one of the breaks and had a conversation about the work that he's been doing, and then also about his thoughts on science fiction prototyping. So let's have a listen to that, and then I'll be back. So Ramez, you have a background in high tech, in technology, but you're also a science fiction writer. Your new science fiction book is getting great reviews, and I know you're, you're working on the on the follow-up. How did those two worlds come together for you? Well, I think like many people who work in high-tech, I'm a science fiction fan. How many people do you meet inside Intel or Google or Facebook who've read science fiction their whole life? It's probably two-thirds, three-quarters of the people. So that's, it, it's a passion. But also, I was in, in program management, similar to product management in a lot of places, which meant let's spec out the next thing that we're going to build. If you're working at large scale, if you're working on machine learning, if you're working on artificial vision, if you're working on anything, you kind of realize that you're building the future. Um, and as a program manager, I was specking out the next thing to do. And in a way, science fiction is doing that. It's, hey, let's, let's explore the ideas of what could come next. So it was a very natural fit for me. 
And a lot of people say design, and specifically high-tech design, is all really an act of futurism. Is this all this act of sort of looking forward to the future? So using science fiction and flipping it around, so not just having sort of ideas about what the future could be and building it and doing things like that, like we both do, but actually using science fiction as a tool to develop a better technology, to develop a better future, that this idea of science fiction prototyping. What do you think we can gain from that? Well, I think um, a lot of prototyping and design, uh, design documents, let's say, can often be a little bit dry, right? And you often focus on, here are the attributes of the product we're building, instead of here are the consequences in the real world. Fiction has to emotionally engage the reader. If it doesn't, it's no good whatsoever. And we do that by tapping into aspirations and fears. So fiction is usually about, here's this awesome thing that could happen, or here's this terrible thing that could happen. So that means that you're actually exploring the consequences of a technology. You're saying, here's how it could be used for good to make people's lives richer, um, and here's how it could have a terrible failure mode or a terrible second order, third order effect, um, which is maybe one or two orders beyond where we think of with design. So that actually starts more with kind of customer needs and customer fears, if you will, or customer needs and customer problems, and then you can work back from that to what's the product you should design. So in your own science fiction, as you start to extrapolate and think about that human impact, what are some of the things that, that, that have come up that have surprised you, that you sort of started thinking about and grappling with in your fiction as it possibly relates back to possible technologies of the future? Well, I, I wrote a, a science fiction novel called Nexus, and it's about a drug that links brains, and it started with a technological premise. What if we actually had nanobots in our brains and could send data back and forth? But the book actually really becomes about the questions of control and ownership. Who gets to dictate what happens on this platform? Who gets to control how it's distributed? Uh, what kinds of things are allowable and not allowable? And I think that's incredibly germane to all the discussions we have today about net neutrality, spying on the internet, copyright law, DRM, all of these things are kind of um, expressions of how people use technology and they all determine, as much as the technology itself, they determine what the social impacts of the technology will be. So what's the sequel about? Uh, the sequel is about the consequences of, uh, the first book is really about um, the fight over control of this technology and will it get released to the world or not. The second book is about the consequences of what happens when the technology is released to the world and any technology, I fundamentally believe, gets, ends up getting used in ways that are good and ways that are bad. You've never invented one, we've never seen one that didn't have some downside. So I'm, I'm a huge optimist. I think that more interconnection between people is tremendously good, uh, but you have to give some, some play to the actual bad things that happen too. And that's what we can use science fiction to do, is science fiction actually gives us that platform to explore all of those. Absolutely. Well, Ramesh, thank you so much for sitting down with me. I've had a great time working with you these last couple of days. Thanks, Brian. It's been really fun. And that's one of the things that we've really seen down here at NASA, at the Autodesk Ideas Conference, is, is that point, that very specific point that, that Ramez made at the, at the end of our interview, was that as we begin to develop these technologies, as we begin to explore science, that there are both good and bad aspects of it, that we can use our technology for good and we can also use it for harm. And that's where science fiction prototyping can give us that way of diving into both those positive and negative effects. It's one of the things that we explored in a previous IEEE computer column that was called Secret Science Fiction, the science fiction that's being written that you're never going to get to read. And that, I think, in, especially in the, in the work that Ramez does with Nexus and, and the follow-up to Nexus, is it gives us that safe area that allows us to go to those dark places. It allows us to not only look at the futures that we want, but really more importantly, allows us to look at the futures that maybe we should avoid. But it gives us that platform to have that conversation. And at the Ideas Conference here at NASA this week, we spent a lot of time talking about that and got really specifically into it, as, especially around the artificial intelligence question, that if we are developing artificial intelligence that may be making decisions on its own, that will be developing not only systems, 
but we'll be developing systems of systems. So we'll be developing a system that is made up of multiple systems, that the complexity of those systems will be so high that the artificial intelligence that we're developing will need to make decisions on its own, that we will not be able to make all of those decisions, that humans may not be able to step in and say, yes, do this, and no, don't do that, that we'll actually have to give that agency to that artificial intelligence. And so how do we then imbue that technology, that artificial intelligence, with a sense of values, with a sense of ethics? How do we take our humanity and imbue that technology with our humanity? It's one of the questions that science fiction has been grappling with for quite some time. I think we've seen it now, certainly for the past 50 years, with things like um, Stanley Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke's uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. We've seen it in um, even some of the early works of um, the work that Isaac Asimov did, that we see that people are grappling with this idea of how do we take our technology and allow it to make decisions, but make decisions that fit with our value system. Now again, what Nathan Shedroff, the author, the co-author of Make It So, would say, well, who gets to decide? Who gets to decide what values that this artificial intelligence is based upon? And again, that's where Ramez is using science fiction prototyping to think about that to think about the positive effects and think about the negative effects and put out those questions that who gets to decide and whose values and who decides what's right, what's right and what's wrong. And we're right in the middle of that. It's actually something that's going on. People are developing these artificial intelligences now. We're actually asking ourselves those questions. And we need that platform to start working out some of those answers and some of those solutions. And that's really what we're using science fiction prototyping for. Well, that's the end of this podcast coming to you from NASA down here in Silicon Valley from Autodesk's Ideas Conference. It's, uh, it's been amazing. Um, on the next podcast, I sit down with author Douglas Copeland, um, whose first novel, Generation X, has become a work of that's sort of logged in popular culture and in history. Uh, but I also talk to him about some of his ideas around science fiction and some of the work that he's been doing. So I think it's going to be really, really exciting. We've got a few more things things and a few more broadcasts that we'll do down here from NASA. As always, if you have any comments or questions or if you have any ideas for science fiction prototypes that you want to bring into the column, we're always looking for new ideas and, and possible futures that we could explore in the column, please get in touch with me at brian.david.johnson at intel.com. And you can always follow me on Twitter. I'm at Intel Futurist. Also, I want to make sure that we're getting out there and we're continuing to push our competition. Uh, we're right at the beginning of it. The competition is the future, powered by fiction, where we're going out and looking for fiction, science fiction prototypes from young minds from 13 to 25. It's going to be a competition that goes through to November, but we're really trying to get out there and get as many young minds involved in the, in the competition, getting them writing science fiction prototypes in short stories, doing them in comic books, possibly even doing them in videos, and also doing them in essays. So if you also, if you have any ideas about how we can really reach out to those young minds, I think it's, it's really important that we get as many any of them involved in this conversation and in this process because number one I want to know and I think we should know what are the futures that they want and what are the futures that they want to avoid but more importantly they're the ones who are going to build those futures and so we really need to have that conversation with them so there's more information on the Science Fiction Prototyping podcast website. You can so click on that and kind of dive into the competition. But if you have any ideas about how to involve those young minds, please, please get in touch with me. So again, thank you so much for joining us on the Science Fiction Prototyping podcast. And I look forward to talking to you soon.